I've talked about Jones Road Beauty a few times on this channel, but I have never done a full face of Jones Road makeup until today. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel and today's video. I am so excited. This has been a long time coming. I have always loved Bobbi Brown because her philosophy on makeup has always been a less is more approach. So it's celebrating what we have and not using makeup as a mask. So if you've been here before, you know, I have always been a less is more kind of gal. So I have been on board with all of Bobbi Brown's new creations. By the way, she is 66 years old, so clearly she's doing something right. She launched the Jones Road line, I believe in 2020. So I did my first video at the end of 2021. I did another one in the summer of 2022, and I will put links to both of those videos down below. And I have slowly accumulated new products as the range has grown. I was also very kindly sent a couple of products in PR, which was huge because I didn't even know they knew who I was. But today I have a large collection we're going to go through, and I believe we are looking at 16 different products. Some of these I have used before. Some of them are brand new. I have certainly never used them all together. It's way more makeup than I would do in a regular look, but it actually has pretty much everything you would need to do that going out makeup. So I do have a few disclaimers. First of all, this is a makeup, in my opinion, that is for mature skin. It is for dry skin or dehydrated skin. This is probably not for those with really oily skin, so buyers beware. You might want to do your research first. I think that she makes makeup for herself, and at 66, she would be in that same sort of camp as me. So they have a lot of oils in them. There's a whole lot of moisturization going on in these. But for me, they're perfect. At 52, I want plump, hydrated, glowy skin because glowy equals youth. So this sort of stuff is right up my alley. Another point, this isn't a high coverage makeup situation, um, in my opinion anyway. So their foundations aren't even medium coverage, I think. So if you like a full face of heavy makeup, this probably isn't the range for you. I would say it's in the light. I'm not even sure you can get to a medium coverage, but for me, it's just the right amount. The third thing to point out is for me anyway, this doesn't have great longevity. If you want to make up you're putting on at 8 in the morning and it's still there at 8 p.m., well, shoot, maybe you, <laughs> you might get lucky. It doesn't work that way for me. No makeup does. Long wear makeup doesn't help. Primers don't help. Finishing sprays don't help. It's just my skin. So what I put on in the morning might look really good for a couple of hours, and that's about all I'm going to get. But I do find it wears well. So I tend to have hydrated skin. I have plump skin. I may not have made up skin, but my skin looks good. So we are looking at concealer, foundation, um, setting powders. We have blush, we have bronzer, we have highlighters, eyeshadows, eyebrows, and mascara. That's pretty much everything you need to look fabulous heading out the door. I have completely clean skin, um, nothing on it except a little bit of Vaseline for the lips because I do have quite, you know, chapped lips. That's no one needs to see that. Because these products are so hydrating, and particularly the foundation has a lot of oils in it, um, it's often recommended that you don't use lots of really hydrating products in skincare before you apply it. You can probably skip a lot of that. Now, I did a full skincare routine this morning. I'm filming this Saturday, by the way. So I did all of that at like 10 this morning, and it's now in the afternoon. So my skin, that's how we looking right now, I have the benefit of a halo light. Um, it's looking nice and plump. It's definitely not dry, but it is definitely not dewy in that sort of really hydrated skin that I would have um, directly after doing skincare. So on the days you're going direct, you might just skip the moisturizer. You probably will not need it. Okay, so the first thing that we're going in with is the concealer set. Well, these are the ones, they're called the face pencils. Now, when I first started with Jones Road in my first video, there was no foundation. This was the foundation, and it made a lot more sense when they launched the foundation because I thought these were really unusual and interesting. But they are very much spot pieces. You use these just where you need it. Now, I have two colors. I have nine, which is a light medium with yellow undertone, and I have the 10, which is light medium with neutral undertone. And I do have yellow undertone, but I also have neutral. I have kind of flexible skin. So I bought one to use as a closer match to my skin and one as a highlighter. 
And then on my last order, I don't even know how it happened. I ended up with the lightest of all of the pencils, which is dumb because my skin is not this light. So I am using it for something else and we'll get to that in a minute. So the way that I'm gonna use these is I'm gonna use the lighter of the one just around the eyes to kind of brighten it up. Okay, a few things about these pencils. Now, you do need to have hydrated skin, which kind of goes against what I just said. But I think when you're using these products, it does actually go against exactly what I said. Where you're going to use these pencils, I think you do need hydrated skin because they could drag a little. So I also find that the way in which you use them, meaning if you do it on the side as opposed to doing it this way, it will drag less. So my skin's doing, I think my skin's perfectly fine. So we're gonna zoom in now. And I'm gonna use this just where I want lightness. Now in fairness, my skin is looking pretty good today, but everybody needs lightness around the eyes, in my opinion, or at least I certainly do. So I'm gonna put this here, and I'm also gonna put it here on the ends, right? And then I'm just gonna use my fingers and I'm gonna dab that in. And can you see how that brightens the eye? It just makes me look awake. And that's the name of the game. <laughs> Doesn't really matter how old you are. We could all probably use a little bit of help in that area. Okay, so that has just instantly brightened that up. So I'm gonna apply some over here as well. And you do not have to be exact with this stuff. It's pretty flexible. It's, I'm just gonna tap it in and already, I love putting brightness on the corners of my eyes because I do have a lot of shadowing there. Okay, look at that, already it's better. So that was the lighter of the two, not the lightest of the three, but I'll come to that. And the next one is really designed and you should be selecting a color that's a match for your skin tone. So if you have redness, and I remember the first video I did of this, I had incredibly red cheeks. So I had to do a lot of correcting. Now for me, I carry a lot of redness around my nose. So I will go in and spot that section now, I do have scarring on my, no on my nose from a car accident. I almost never remember that, by the way. But while we're here, you know, that might take down. I have a lot of color. It's a lot of darkness because that's the way the scar tissue went. And I look a little red down here. So I'm just going to cover that up. The beauty of this is that if you're less is more, sometimes you do not need even a whole lot more than this. And I think that was the whole point when she first launched it. You know, a few little color corrections here and there, and you're ready to go. Like, already that's just looking great. I've had a lot of redness in my eyebrows late, in my, my eyelids. I have no idea why that's happening, and they've been extra dry. So I might just put some here and see what happens, if I can take down some of that redness. Because I don't usually do foundation up here. Let's just see what happens. So you can sometimes just do this and you don't really need anything else. Isn't that nice? <laughs> if you can see Gary's face right now. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what I'm gonna do with the lightest of all of the colors, and it's kind of funny because I got the package out. I, I got a few pieces recently just to do this video. Like, what am I gonna do with this? Why on earth would I have purchased this color? And then I thought, you know what? This could come in really handy for this because if you are like me and you're tired a bit, sometimes it helps to put a light. I tend to do a nude. It's a bit lighter than I would generally do. And it's quite stark. So then I will just go in and maybe try this. And can you see how it's just a little bit lighter? So this, my friends, will not go to waste. I'm thinking that's actually kind of genius. It wasn't intentional. How on earth did I buy a third one of those? I will never know. Okay, so next up is called What the... F no. <laughs> WTF, What the Foundation. I almost said the wrong word there. Hmm. Now, this is an interesting product. Now, I did a video on this initially, and I liked it. It has its downsides, but what I've done is purchased a second of the same one to see if what I didn't like about it might be improved. A couple of things about this foundation. Um, 
This is the one product that I think is obviously in the oiliest of territories, so beware. Now it is a mixture of oil and water and therefore it has its own warning labels with it in that the consistency of this can vary from batch to batch, from location to location. When I first got this, um, it was heavily separated. When you opened it up, oil was on one side. I mean, it was goopy, it was gross, I'm not going to lie. But they said that's okay, that's to be expected. If you give it a good stir, which I, you know, you can buy a very fancy um, metal spatula from Jones Road. I've got loads of these from different things. And then you give it a good stir and it helps with the consistency. Now, when I compared this to loads of other videos and loads of other reviews, I could see that other people's versions of this just looked thicker. It didn't have that consistent oily nature that mine does. And I'm gonna show you what this looks like now. And I'm also gonna say, I really don't like the packaging. It's goopy, it's gloopy, it's messy. I mean, you can see. Okay, so if you can see that, I mean, it looks a little bit like an oily mess, I'm not gonna lie. Um, and by nature, it doesn't really bother me, but look at the packaging. It's just gloopy and goes everywhere. So that's not great. By using this in here and going like this, I was able to mix the product together. But you can see, it's just, it's very loose, it's very, lotiony so that has its downsides but i've continued to use this anyway so what i decided to do was to buy a new one because i purchased that i don't know i must have purchased that a year ago i'm not sure i did the video oh gosh more than a year ago probably 18 months ago i bought it so i decided it was time to buy a new one anyway because i didn't even look at the use by situation and we're going to open this right now to see if it is any different. Now I have this in the color beige, which is a light medium with neutral undertone. So this I mean, it's definitely a great color for me. So now we're gonna open it up and see what it looks like. Gosh, my fingers are crossed. Okay, so let's see what this looks like. The moment of truth. Aha, that's what I'm talking about. So if you see the difference between these two, I mean, that's got a lot of oil going on. This looks like a fluffy cloud. Okay, so that makes me happy. It looks like I got the consistency that I wanted. So I have used this other makeup a fair amount, but that's now gonna go in the bin and I get to use the nice fluffy one because I have watched a lot of reviews and a lot of it was around the application method. I found this hard to get the coverage I wanted. I have used a brush, I have used a sponge and I have used my finger. Sponges, oh God, no, it just soaked up everything. Even though I believe Jones Road said to use it with a dry sponge instead of a wet one because it will soak up all the product. The dry sponge, it just, it didn't do anything. You couldn't see it anywhere on my skin. And the brush was almost the same. So I found the easiest way to apply this is by tapping it on my skin. But I have higher hopes for this because I've seen people use brushes and it is beautiful on it. And it's just looks like a nice fluffy, makeup. Yay. Okay, so we're going to go in with that now. Okay, I have to put my hair up. <sighs> Don't laugh. I have not found any other solution. I've done this in a few other makeup videos, but now that I have fringe, um, they get in the way. I have found no easy way to keep it out of my face that doesn't end up impacting my hair later, right? Because I have loads of these little clips and when my hair was all one length, you could just put it off to the side and it was fine. But when you have fringe that's designed to go straight down and you split it in half and you do that, it looks really bad later. And I'm going out tonight, so <laughs> that's not an option. So what I'm gonna do is apply this in the way that I have been applying the other one. I'm just gonna use my fingers. Okay, so I'm gonna grab a spatula, not, not that one, that's oily. Um, and I'm just gonna take a little bit iced and put it onto my fingers. And I'm just gonna kind of just do this. Warm it up a little bit and apply it to the skin. Oh my God, it feels so different from the other one. And I'm just gonna pat it in. Now what I have found about this makeup that is so interesting is that how it treats my skin throughout the day. Like I said, it wears well over time, but what I find is myself in the mirror going, oh, doesn't my skin look great? Doesn't my skin look great? And that's what I have found this makeup does for my skin. And if you know me, you know, it's not about made up skin, it's about healthy skin, dewy skin. Well, it's a lot thicker. So you probably could get a lot more coverage than I have gotten with this in the past. 
going to actually physically mix this because it was like it had some kind of graininess in it. Let's see. Do you see this? Hmm. Because there really isn't anything on my skin at this stage for it to be interacting with as far as, you know, pilling. It's not pilling. But gosh, it's a lot more of a coverage. Holy Toledo Batman. This can totally get to a medium coverage. Wow. Boy, I had that completely <laughs> wrong in my previous video. But is there a texture issue here? This is a very different texture than I had last time. So we're going to try a brush. Oh, it's actually quite nice. I see a little something coming off, but it's... seems to be working. It is amazing to me how different this foundation feels <laughs> than the one I've been using for the past year and a half. It has a way more coverage. It feels lovely. It feels so good on the skin. Oh my gosh. My mature skin ladies are going to love this. Okay, I actually liked the greasy one, <laughs> but I like this way better. I mean, look at that. This is buildable. It did have a little bit of a, a graininess to it, but it's almost like it sunk into the skin. It does make me wonder what that is. So I'm going to apply a tiny bit more. These are the areas where I carry my redness. I don't really have a lot of redness, but I want to see how it's going to build. And the fact that I can use it with a brush actually makes me happy. I'm not someone who really likes to use the fingers. Makeup artists like it. I find it gloopy and gross. Now I'm going to apply a little bit here because my eyelids are looking a little bit red. Oh. Carrie, look. Do you like it? What? Do you like it? I like it! I like it so much more and I liked it anyway. Okay, WTF earns its name. Look at that. Gorgeous. Okay. Okay, so that just made my day. And the packaging isn't going to get all manky because it's not all oily. So that solves that problem. I did have to decanter that into little small, I have these tiny little travel things I get from Trini London. So that when I was traveling, so I didn't have to take glass. I wouldn't travel with this thing. It's far too big. Um, but it would make it a lot easier for me to decant now. Oh my gosh, that's like, yeah, that made my day. Okay, so next we are going to move on to... The blush. This is called the Lip and Cheek Tint and I have this in rosy brown. Now I bought this a long time ago so I wouldn't buy this color again. At the time they only had a few colors and they have this whole other range of colors that I now wish I had which were in these kind of corally spaces but at any rate it is a pretty color. I've actually used this a lot. I'm gonna put it on my lips first because my lips are dry. It's lovely. Um, and it works very well. It's a color that does work for me. And I'm going to take and apply this to the cheeks. Which I'm just going to put here to get a bit of color. I always apply my blush up so that everything is going that way. I don't generally do the apples of my cheeks because they probably fall when I'm not smiling. So that's what I do. It's pretty. There's so many other colors that I would like to experiment with, but instead of replacing products that I have for the most part, I've been buying new products instead because I just want to see what else is happening in the range. And the beauty also is that they are shipping to the EU now um, with no import charges. Woohoo! So that was big. Um, and the same with the UK, I believe. So they've got EU distribution, UK distribution. So that's made me a happy, happy shopper. Okay, so that is the blush and the lipstick, and it's really pretty, really moisturizing, feels so good. And let me just say that right now, my skin feels lovely, lovely. I did also purchase, which is not here right now, I think it's called the Best Blush in the color Pop. And the reason I got that color is I did a video, I think at the beginning of the year, of Bobbi Brown's essentials, the things that she finds to be the things she can't live without. And that was one of the um, the items on her list. Now I did a whole video and I'll put that link down below and the color did not suit me. So I gave that away. I don't have that one anymore. 
Okay, so what I have now are a couple of setting powders. Now, they kindly gifted these to me. That was a big, exciting day for me with their awesome, very cool brush. Um, I have two colors here. I have a light and a yellow. And in theory, you would use these, or I would use these in different ways. So you might use yellow around the eyes um, and then the light one more for the face. Now, I'm going to try to do both and see if there's any difference when I use under the eye between the two colors, okay? Now, I personally wouldn't use a brush this big for a face powder um, because I like to spot powder instead. I like a bit of the glow, so I don't want that to go all over. So I tend to use a, an eyeshadow brush so that I can spot do it. So this has one of these dispensers where you shake it off into there. I don't even usually bother. I just spin it around. I take a little bit on my on my brush and then I do this. Okay, so I'm gonna start with the yellow and I'm just gonna do this on one side. And I generally just go here and kind of down the face. I do like any glow to remain and I'm also gonna be putting wet products over here. So I'm really just looking at this area here. Okay, so that's the yellow. So in theory, that would be a bit brightening. I think that looks fine. Yep, happy out. And then I'm going to use the light color on the other side to see if there's actually any difference. Um, it's funny that I'm kind of getting back into powder setting powders again. For a long time I was using just uh, pressed powders and I don't know, for some reason I'm kind of liking them. Okay, let's see if there's any difference. I actually think the yellow is more brightening. Okay. All right, so now we know. So I will be using the light sort of down the sides of my face and I'm gonna stick with the yellow just on the eyes. So yes, I'm gonna go back in with the yellow on the other eye because I think it looks brighter. And by the way, I'm sure that I don't have to remind anybody that I'm so not a makeup artist. <laughs> I'm so actually not a makeup person at all. I am the worst at doing makeup. Um, yeah, there you go, okay. So that is the setting powder. Okay, so next is the bronzer. And let me start off by saying, this is so heavily pigmented, you need to be careful. Because the first time I used it, I just put the brush in, went like that, and oh my gosh, I had the biggest shadows. So you need to be very, very careful with it. Um, and it's actually, I'm using this for an entirely different use instead. I'm gonna use a tiny bit, just like ever so little. I'm gonna put it off on the back of my hands and I'll put a little bit up here. And I'm going to put a little bit down here. I'm going to stay away from the cheeks for the minute. I don't do a lot of contour situation bronzy unless I have a makeup color that's too light. And then I would tend to use a bronzer all over. I might put a little bit just here. We'll see. See? Too much pigment. <laughs> see what I just did? I didn't heed my own advice. So I do have a bit of shadowing here, as you can see, which I don't generally do, but all in all, looking good. Now, why I love this product so much, this bronzer, by the way, I have this in tan, which is a golden bronze. This is my everyday eyeshadow. It is the absolute perfect, wow, a lot came off there. The perfect color for just putting a bit of shape to my eyes. I use this Every day that I'm using uh, when I'm wearing eye makeup, this is my go-to eyeshadow. It's mad. It's like this. Sometimes I'll, I'll wear this and nothing else. It just gives that dimension. It gives a, that little bit of warmth. It's the perfect color. I love it, love it, love it. So that's how I use it. It's my eyeshadow. <laughs> it's my go-to eyeshadow. Um, I'm not a big eye makeup gal, so I do have three different eyeshadows here today, which is kind of funny. Um, and I have certain things that I'm going for or that I'm looking for, and that's why I have three different products to see which one is going to deliver. This is my favorite. I absolutely love it. I probably do makeup, I don't know, four days a week maybe? Depends if I have meetings, presentations, whatever. I often will wear not at all, but when I do, this is the guy that I'm reaching for every single time. Like, look at that. It's subtle, it's just a little bit, it's just the perfect color. Love. Fab. Okay, so while we're on eyes, we might as well stick there, right? And I'm gonna come back to my highlighting, finishing products after. I have 
three different eyeshadows and I don't have any idea how these are going to do. Two of them I've never tried and one I just haven't been able to figure out and that is this guy. This is called the Sparkle Wash and I have this in So Pretty. So basically I have a pressed powder eyeshadow, what looks to be a loose powder, although it could be cream, I don't know yet. And then here is a liquid. I've never used a liquid eyeshadow before. I don't know how it works. Now I did try this and I'm like, hmm, I don't know what I'm supposed to do with it, but I'm gonna try it now anyway, because I feel that the color payoff isn't great. I put it on and I'm like, it's wet, first of all, which many of you may be expecting and it just looks very sheer. Maybe that's how it's supposed to look. I tried to layer it and layer it and layer it and it just never, like the way that it looks in here, the way that it looks on the applicator and then the way that it looks on my eye, I don't know, is it supposed to be that subtle? I don't know. They say that it's a silver brown with multi-dimensional shimmer. And okay, I'd say it is. Okay, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if I like this one. This, 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 this is probably just isn't my kind of application method. I definitely want a shimmer and I definitely want it within that color profile, but this isn't giving me what I want. So if you have any pointers, I would greatly appreciate it. So I have two other ones here and I'm gonna do one on each eye because I don't know how this is gonna work out. My regular go-to eyeshadow, if I'm doing it, is the bronzer all over and then a highlighter something that just in the, in the middle of the lid gives me a bit of a pop so this has great potential this is called the best eyeshadow in the color champagne and that looks like a, a goldy sparkly situation now this is a pressed powder so we are going to try this just by putting it on my finger because that's generally how i do it and i'm going to put it oh yeah no that's great that is lovely so generally i would just put it sort of on the middle I overdid it. I went a little too far on both sides, but sure, whatever. But the color's gorgeous. I tend to go a bit lighter in the more ivory space, but I love it. This is beautiful. I am so glad I picked that up. Um, gorgeous. And then the next one that I have is called the Just a Sec Eyeshadow in Linen. Um, and this looks like it's slightly lighter. I obviously went more uh, towards a sort of lighter hue. Now this, when you touch it, I don't exactly know. Oh, it's a cream. I've never used a cream eyeshadow before. It's kind of sp spongy. Do you have to break the seal? I wonder, like you do the Miracle Bomb. Maybe you do. I could have put way too much on my fingers now. Okay. Ah, oh, beautiful. I think you might have to break the seal on this puppy too. So it's a lot softer, it's a lot creamier. Oh, that is so pretty. It's a little easier to control than the powder was for me. Um, oh my gosh. What do you think, Gary? Isn't that gorgeous? That's pretty much what I would do for an eye and not a whole lot else. The base color and a little bit of that. Oh, so that is stunning. Both of those are beautiful. Look at that. Ew, that's just fantastic. I love it. The one thing I realized I don't have here that was an oversight is an eyeliner. I don't have an eyeliner because that's the one thing that's gonna be missing from this look, particularly because I'm going out tonight. I would generally wanna do a little cat eye and I don't even have anything here that I can use for that. Um, anyway, that's all right. So what I would do now is put on the mascara and if you haven't tried the Jones Road Mascara, you're in for a treat. Um, this is probably the third or fourth one that I've purchased. And I've had mixed thoughts about it. That when it's working properly, it delivers so well. I mean, your lashes go sky high and they're bushy and they're fabulous. But I have found the applicator gets very gloopy very fast. And you're trying to clean all of it off. And sometimes I have to use a spoolie because it goes quite heavy. Um, but this is a new one. We're gonna try it and see how it goes. And I'm not gonna curl my lashes, which I generally do before I do a video. So we're gonna take it out and see how it looks. And I like to twist it when I bring any mascara out because just to get as much of the product off as possible. Gosh, that looks great. That's a nice fluffy brush. Not gonna use a curler and we're gonna put it straight on. Now, it only comes in black. It comes in a very, 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 very black because Joan Rose says that anything but black is wimpy. <laughs> I don't, I haven't been buying black anymore, by the way. 
Uh, wow, look at those freaking lashes, man. Look at that. You don't even need to do lots of wiggle. You don't need to do lots of anything. I mean, come on. Look at the difference in the lashes. I don't even need to go in and get more product. I can tell there's a lot of product on it still. I can see that my eyes need a bit of a, the eyeshadow needs some evening out and some other stuff, but I'm not going to worry about that right now. Look at that. Like, oh my gosh. Imagine if you did multiple coats, which I'm not going to do. I'm not like a big, massive, bushy eyelash kind of gal. Um, I'm just not. But look, <laughs> look at that. Are you seeing this, Carrie? Are you as excited as I am? <laughs> okay, I think we have two products left. Um, and I love them both. Okay, the first, they kind of would be used interchangeably. I wouldn't generally use them both, but I'm gonna because we're here. The first is the Miracle Bomb. Now, the first time I bought the Miracle Balm, I bought it in the color Tawny, and it was really dark. And I used that even before I put any makeup on because it gave me a bit of sunshine, it gave me a little bit of a tan. It was super dark, and I never would have ordered that if I hadn't seen Bobbi Brown use it on herself. Now, I threw it out because I do try to figure out how long the stuff is supposed to last. I don't have it any longer, but I bought a new one, and this one is in Magic Hour. And this is sort of the color, it's kind of a golden-y. Magic Balm is an interesting product. You have to really break the seal before you can use it to, re to really get at it. It is so <laughs> moisturizing. This is not for oily skin people. Now, I tend to use this as kind of a highlighting piece, right? And I put it just under my eyes usually because it's so deeply hydrating. It keeps my skin so plump throughout the day. This is definitely one of these products, and I don't know if you can see any difference in the side to side. I'm looking so great and moisturized right now. You might not be able to see it. It would be considered a highlighter, and you can put it on the high points of your cheeks and all of that. This is so great for your skin. Your skin, it's, it's full of skin-loving ingredients. It's probably more skincare than it is makeup. I'm obsessed with this product. The only downside to these is they're freaking honking. They're so big. I will never go through all of this product. And I know at some stage on their site, they were selling little small versions of this. And I think you had to buy the whole kit. I was never gonna use all the colors, so I didn't buy it. But I wish you could just buy each of these in a smaller piece, because I'd throw it in my handbag. It was so great. I absolutely love this. The days that I don't wear makeup at all, I put this on. I will literally put this just in this area because my eyes get really dehydrated and it's the part that I feel is showing my age. So I like to do whatever I can to keep this area nice and plump and moist. I know a lot of people don't want like that word, but it's all about hydration and this delivers it. So I use that as a skincare piece right over the makeup. I will apply it again throughout the day if I'm sitting here and I'm not in the office. Gorgeous. The last is the face oil. This is the Shimmer Face Oil, and it is in the color Midas. This is definitely one of my favorite products. Now, I'm not massively into highlighters. I don't put them on every day, but if you need a little bit of sparkle, if it's your going out-out, I would reach for this. Now, I wouldn't generally do this and the Miracle Balm together, um, and you do not need a lot of this, and it squirts out, so beware of that too. This is stunning. So I try to control and only take a teeny tiny bit out. Um, and it is Oil City. So don't like oily stuff? You're not going to like it. But this has such a shimmer to it. I mean, and anything that's an oil in my book is a winner because I have dry skin. I have dehydrated skin. I have aging skin. Can you see the highlight on that and there's a little bit of a shimmer and it's so pretty and so hydrating okay guys that is it that is my full face of jones road makeup now if you're looking at me you're probably thinking well gosh she doesn't look all that made up and and it's not it's just me but a bit better and i think that's what's so wonderful about these products is that 
when I look in the mirror, I don't look like I'm made up. I probably could put a pint of more blush on now, but anyway, I can do that after. But what I find is so wonderful about this range is how my skin is going to feel in six hours, how it's going to feel in eight hours, because whether or not this makeup remains in place as far as the look of it, um, I'll touch my skin and it'll feel great. It'll feel hydrated. It'll feel like it's in good condition. That is way more important to me. So what do you think? Do you like it as much as I do? I mean, you know, to me, it's chef's kiss. This is exactly what I am going for. So I'd love to hear your thoughts. Have you tried Jones Road? Was it for you? Was it not for you? Do you have any tips and tricks about how I might use these products in a different way? I am a pretty loyal Jones Road consumer and will continue to try the new products as they come on stream. So Thank you so much for joining me today. If you enjoyed the look of this video, I please hope that you will subscribe to my channel because so many of you don't. It costs nothing and it really helps me grow. And I hope you'll give this video a thumbs up and maybe even share with a friend. So thanks again for joining today and I'll see you in the next video. Bye. I stopped talking as soon as you said stop talking. <laughs> the first don't you wish that happened more often? <laughs> I mean, that's all I have to say? <laughs> no. I dare you to try it again. Well, it's not going to work next time. Stop talking about it. Nope. <laughs> <laughs>